<laughs> yeah. No, this is this was just this was just like a general opener because um. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Like, I think this is the first year in a while. Like, I've felt kind of underwhelmed by all the albums coming out. Like, honestly, like I, every year, like I've had something that has really been like, oh shit, like I love this. And even like, I like, I love Igor and I quite like Lil Carner's project and stuff, but like nothing really jumped out to me. Um, Are you telling me Jesus is King didn't do it for you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's... Only Kanye could remember how to mix properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like even even <laughs> with Igor, like Igor was really good. Like, don't get me wrong. It was really, really good. Still not my favorite Tyler album, but like, really? like what, what is? 100% Flower Boy. Flower just Boy because like, better, yeah. where, like, and it's not because it's a like worse album or anything like that. It's just because of where it hit me. Mm. You know what I mean? Like in terms of like where I was in my life when I heard that album. I don't know what it was about this year, but nothing really like struck me apart from maybe Loyal Karen's album. That's probably the one that I'll take away from this year and probably continue listening to for a while to come. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely missing something though. Like I'm definitely missing a huge release that I've been listening to like since day one that I just I can't I'm, remember right now. Yeah, I think Lil, Lil Sims for me. The, oh, yeah, Lil exactly Sims as well, yeah. 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 There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, yeah. I think when we saw Primavera, I don't think I've ever been as hyped for a performance ever because like, I, I, I listen to that album every day. <laughs> yeah, like I, I've heard that album so many times just because you've played it. No, not because I'm actively <laughs> listening. It's like secondhand smoke or something, do you know yeah. what I mean? It's just like you're playing it all the time. But it's, it's a sick album. But no, I mean, I wasn't really super aware of it before the album came out and I didn't even listen to the album when it came out. I think it was a couple of months after. But um, I think... It's like front to back, even though it's from the UK, it doesn't really sound like any other UK albums. It sounds like more international in, it, in its production and there's no samples on it. And it's just, yeah, it's fucking amazing. Because even like Slew Ties album, like I really liked it and it's growing on me a bit more, but it's one of them things where it's like the recency bias, bias comes in. I'm like, I'm unsure what I actually think of it, but I think like 10 years from now, it'll be like a really good vignette into like what Brexit Britain is like. And I mm. think like mm. with time, it'll be considered like a classic album for that reason. But now like, it's it's like hard to say like you can't really say something's a classic album or anything just after it comes out because it needs to have the test of time do you know what i mean mm. i think controversially as a as a brockhampton fan i think they released their best album this year whoa yeah. whoa, whoa. That's <laughs> a hot take right there. i know i know it took me a while because i thought like when i listened to it the first time it really hit me and i was like oh <laughs> like this is the I'm getting looks from the corner of me. <laughs> I want to turn this way. <laughs> um, for, a minute, for, a minute, for a minute, I thought that was Orin just turning down the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. No, but like I, I, I've I, given it a while now. You know what I mean? And I still find myself coming back to it. And I've, I say like since it came out, I've probably listened to it weekly. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like at the very, very least, listen to it weekly. I think it's the most like polished, refined piece of work that they've done. And don't get me wrong. Like obviously I love the other albums so so much but i think if we're talking like best work definitely i think it's their best work i so think no halo is potentially their best song i think I sugar is their best song okay. <laughs> i think that you see that's what i mean though like those songs are polished those are like songs that they have released which is like you know broad statement but you get what i mean <laughs> i mean we, we talked about claro earlier like yeah. that's one that i didn't pick up straight away because i was like there's just so much hype around that and you, you can't really sometimes I find it really hard to digest stuff if there's so many people talking about it in a certain way it's like you feel almost like your opinion is being not impeded on but if you're hearing so much shit on the internet it's hard to make sense of it sometimes so I like give it a bit of time and when I listened to it I was like oh my god I love this but loads yeah, of people are giving it so records. much shit like, yeah and I think it's the problem when names are kind of being thrown around a lot that you kind of think uh, am I just being marketed to or am I just kind of going along with assuming something's interesting especially that type of sound as well because it's quite a a minimalist type sound like you don't and it's a popular sound like the bedroom pop type of thing is really popular at the moment but I think Claro's release was fantastic I think uh, going on a segue of bedroom pop as well Girl in Red um, she put mm. out three EPs mm. this year and I loved all of them I think she's fantastic literally only listened this week but yeah. was blown unbelievable. away unbelievable like. like so good uh, definitely and I think I think there is stuff in there for hip hop fans there is kind of like there's a kind of beatsy element to the production on a lot of the mm. bedroom pop stuff um, and there's a real DIY spirit to a lot of it so mm. I think uh, that Clara album and the, the Girl in Red stuff is fantastic I think bedroom pop in general is having a really good moment at the moment it's kind of mm. moved past Mac DeMarco uh, and has moved into more interesting people doing kind of cool stuff mm. that you, you can really emotionally relate to. Going back to actually the Local Boy release, yeah, I, I think the Local say. Boy is a really good example of it. It's, yeah, it's stuff that kind of hits you emotionally. Even like him playing with Greg Tisdall last last night in Bellow Barrett, it was last night? Some some night this yeah. week. 
I don't know where I am, what time of day it is. But uh, <laughs> yeah, like th- those two boys, like that's bedroom pop coming to Ireland and having an Irish spin being put on it. Like, I think it's really cool. Yeah, real authentic as well. I mm. think that's something that's really likable about the genre is it, it feels like it's your mate making it, even yeah. if it isn't your mate making it. Um, so that's nice. I think also in terms of big hip hop albums, uh, for me, Zoo uh, by Denzel Curry was yeah. like, I think for me, Ricky is like the hip hop banger of the year. Uh, the album overall, I think is a huge progression for him as an artist. I think it's combining that kind of heavy stuff he was doing before with a more kind of commercially appealing way, but like not necessarily selling himself out. Uh, I Denzel Curry for me is like a huge one to watch going forward. Mad mm. that he released Kirk, or, or fucking... Um, Clark of N. Yeah, like, what would you call that album again? Sorry, um, Taboo. Taboo, like, yeah. he, he released Taboo, like, December last year. Four, it's four and five years. Yeah, yeah. like, he, he's relentless. And the fact that it's <clears> not saturating it with just, like, the same shit, because I think that's, like, a problem that hip-hop has, is, like, people will just, like, ping out stuff, and it all just sounds that the was, same. like, the new Trippy Red album for me. Yeah. Like, there's some notable songs on it, but it's just, like, how many times is it? Like, it's a love letter to four. Like... Mm. Mm. Like less than four years, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, going on that, fuck all that positivity. What were you disappointed by this year? Was there anything that you were it's like? It's got to be chance. I mean, that was shocking. <laughs> <laughs> that was a uh, full. What was it? I'm Ninety Kanye. minutes of. Yeah, Kanye. What Kanye was pretty shocking too. I don't think the Kanye one's as bad no. as it's made out no. to be. But it's like if it has the sort of religious connotations attached to it, people are already going in with this mindset. I was talking about this to someone the other day. It's like. You have a preconceived notion of what it's going to be and like people are just writing it off already like don't get me wrong it's nowhere near it's probably his worst project like full stop but i think if someone else yeah. had dropped that people would be like oh this is kind of interesting they're bringing religion back you know it's yeah. like <laughs> it's like i don't know it's to me it's it, it's just the chick-fil-a bars and like yeah. there's so much stuff on it that's like dropping the ball though you know what i mean out the lyrics and like some of the beats are quite good it is they're like, sick like what's it on god with the crazy yeah. like yeah. you get past the mixing and anything i mean like some of those, that first four, I think it's it's probably only five tracks long, but the first like three are pretty fantastic. Um, but no, that chance to rapper, like I couldn't get three songs in and then I just scrapped it. I'm going to go controversial again and say, I think that gets too much shit. I really if do. I'm the exact same as you. I, do, like, I feel like people bandwagon. Remember we were meme, talking about, what's that, meme. marriage story? With the marriage story thing, We were talking yeah. about earlier that we think marriage story is just being coming memed and people are saying that they don't like it because it's a twitter meme i think it's the exact same thing with chances album don't get me wrong it's not good but like it's not like <laughs> as <laughs> diabolical like i still listen to a, like one song off that album you know like it's one or two disappointing yeah. but it's not mm. like the worst album of the like it's just not the way i was being told about it, it was like this is a really average hip-hop album there's a couple of tracks on there that i will come back to uh, it isn't as terrible as people are saying. Also, like I, I just don't think it was a surprising direction for Chance the Rapper. Like yeah. I've always gotten that vibe off him. Uh, I when it when I heard it, I was like, this isn't exciting. This feels very Chance the Rapper though. So yeah, I just wasn't that surprised by yeah. it. I wasn't super into Coloring Book either that no, much. Yeah, I actually did like Coloring Book. I think Acid Rap was really cool and it was like quite a seminal project. But it's like people are wanting Acid Rap again. It's like he's not going to do that. He's not a college student drop an acid anymore he's got a kid and like a wife and like yeah he wants to talk about it all the time but like if you don't want to listen to it don't fucking listen to it and that's a bit like the childish gambino collab project that everyone wants to and stuff like that it's like you always want what you can't have kind of thing but um yeah it's like internet culture just kind of fucks some people doesn't it like he had to cancel his tour because it just this this, just just nosedive like all the ticket sales but um he, I, I was saying to someone the other day, like, ASAP Rocky, like, uh, he didn't have a project. No, he did have a project come out this year. Or was it last year? Last year. But yeah, I think the Bushka Boy came out this year. I actually think he's one of the most disappointing artists of the decade. I think he's culturally That's irrelevant. a big statement, yeah, no. man. <laughs> that think, is a huge I one. I think for, like, the, the cultural relevance he has, it, you know, it, he's massive. Like, he's everywhere. But I don't think he's had, like, an album since potentially... Um, long live asap that and even that is not like not yeah, a quintessential like classic wrong, album yeah. like i don't think he has something under his belt that people look back in time and be like he was one of the greatest artists of our generation i it think seems... he's tried different things but i don't think he's got a classic album under his belt mm-hmm. it even seems like now people are looking to asap for a bit more in terms of projects and stuff like danny brown released an album did anyone listen to that yeah i love that album yeah very good that, that is highly underappreciated if anything i was just only disappointed that q-tip didn't prefer, uh, produce more songs on it because he only did the three and two of them were singles as well so then when you listen to the album it's a bit like 
No, I thought that was really good. And I don't think it's been talked about as much as it. I think something else was yeah. maybe released on the same. same yeah, that, I can't remember what it was, but like someone was recommending that album to me. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to listen to that. But listen to whatever it was first. You know what I mean? And then just forgot to listen to Donnie Brown. One. Uh, JPEG Mafia had an album out this year as well. Another one I forgot to listen to because I think it came out around the same time as something else. But mm. like apparently that very well received by fans. It's, it's a lot more poppy as well. Then there's, it's a lot less like sort of straight hip hop. Like. Well, like a lot of his earlier stuff, like he one of his songs he released before Veteran was a Carly Rae Jepsen yeah. cover, and it's like <laughs> ghost pop. I don't know, like the <laughs> genres for fucking everything now. But you listen to it and you're like, no, it's it's really yeah. fucking good. But it's like, um, yeah, I feel like it was like it wasn't a massive step on from Veteran his latest yeah. album. Do you know what I mean? Um, like left field hip hop leaders, like the the people who've been kind of storming ahead of it, really didn't get attention this year with their releases, like JPEG Mafia. Uh, the Injury Reserve album I for me I'm constantly furious at, about how little attention that because I love that album so yeah, much yeah great um, but yeah Danny Brown's another one that like there just wasn't much uh, Earl Sweatshirt's release yeah. all of these albums just didn't get the attention and I'm very surprised because when I was coming into the year I was like this is the sound of 2019 this is what I thought was going to define hip hop in 2019 what I thought was going to be like very weird pushing the boundaries hip hop Uh you know maybe a bit heavier experimental stuff but it really kind of those projects came out but they just didn't get the fans do you think people are getting tired of hip-hop like to an extent like because because i know it is like the most popular genre in the world right now but do you think that the, the whole i feel like the whole trap thing is lo- people are losing interest in it but do you think overall people are like you're seeing the comeback of, like guitar bands right now do you think that people are tiring of it i think oh. indie is going to be big next year yeah, same. yeah i think you look at like because like every week on the show, I break down like what is the biggest streaming song in the world or like charting song in the world. Like consistently for the past year, like Post Malone has been in there like every single week. It was, but the song still did incredible, and people started listening to the songs. Like I fucking hate that project so much, but like, <laughs> like I really do. Like it's just so bland, but like people are listening to it. Like I think maybe the traditional hip hop fan might be getting sick of hip hop but the world definitely isn't. You know what I mean? I think like your average music listener is listening to more rap music now than ever before. You know what I mean? And maybe that's what like, maybe that's what we're feeling more than anything else. Maybe it's not like the hip hop music that we, you know, associate with is the music we associate with because like, people are listening to like Post Malone now and I remember a couple of years ago Post Malone was this cool underground artist who like released White Iverson and the guy showed me it in fucking French class and I was like, look at this guy, isn't this crazy? I was like, yeah, that's cool. And now he's like, biggest star in the world like but i guess guess it's like what you said about bedroom pop it's like the influence of hip-hop is seeping into everything else but mm. like hip-hop itself maybe isn't i mean it's still the the biggest genre in the world but i think it's maybe losing its appeal as much because like you listen to fucking like there's like metalcore tracks with hip-hop instrumentals with you know running Mm. hi-hat that code orange the code orange track unbelievable Mm. with injury reserve unbelievable i was like all of my loves coming together <laughs> finally but I, I don't think there's another genre in the world that can do that like i don't think that you can mix other genres as like naturally as you can with hip-hop i don't know maybe i'm wrong but i think one of the best examples of it this year that everyone seems to have glossed over was the old town road lil nas x <laughs> that's another one the album seven he dropped that this year and that just got absolutely swept under the rug because everybody was sick of that song before <laughs> yeah the it still did really well though. Like it nominated for a Grammy now. He only—I was reading—he only got fourteen million out of it. Full stop. Like that's all he made out of the song. I mean, that's mental. That song's been streamed like seventeen billion times. Now there's so many different remixes as well of it, and like different artists featuring on it and stuff. So like, you know, that's. I think I remember I was saying I forgot like one album that for, I, I remember now that the UK exists and that Dave released Dave Psychodrama Psycho at the start yeah, of the yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's that's definitely the one I was forgetting. Like, that's you know an incredible. JME currently has an album out. And none of us have heard it. <laughs> it's not on streaming. Yeah, no, that's gas. Like, there was there was some big moments for the UK this year, though. There was, like, Kano coming back with an album, Dave yeah. releasing his album. Top Boy was just such a critical moment, I think, for like, UK absolutely. hip-hop as well. Like, because... You had before we talked about we talk about all the time like Kanye having uh, all day and performing at the Brits and having all the Grammy mm-hmm. MCs in the back and I feel like Top Boy like Drake being involved in that and stuff like that was such a big moment and yeah it's it's like people are definitely paying attention I've seen even seen Kenny Beats is doing like a, a track with Hetty One like a drill yeah. track and it's like 
in what universe could you have seen that before yeah. like there's that there's like top boy obviously but i feel like the the pinnacle of like everything that the uk scene has been building for the last like 10 years was storms he headline in glass oh, yeah. like 100 percent, and like even like the bit that still gets me like the bit i still think about to this day is like him listing off all the artists that have come before him and then listing off all the artists that he wants to see come up just listing off like maybe like 50 names from the uk scene in general and then mm-hmm. saying that he forgot people like that felt like rap music in the uk had won you know what i mean like and even his album there released a couple of days ago i haven't had a chance to like properly sit with it like i've listened to it i like it but like i know it means so much more now because of that you know what i mean like it's incredible to see someone like that even just like in the uk of all places like that happen what were your thoughts on the skepta album it's my favorite skepta album like <laughs> just because i can listen to it so much easier than a lot of the other stuff i don't think it's as, like necessarily like his hardest bars or anything like that but there's just there's like garage tunes and shit that are like mixed in within that and i just i don't know for me it was just my favorite yeah, yeah like yeah. don't really don't really have a massive reason behind it i was so blown away by konnichiwa like it was just like mm-hmm. all i listened to for two three years and uh, i feel like i i just i don't know when i went into it i was just like this isn't konnichiwa which is probably like <laughs> bad bad approaching music critically but uh, it, it's yeah, I struggled to stick with me because of that. I think, like, when I listened to it the first time around, I went, oh, yeah, that's cool. Didn't think about it again. But every so often, like, a song will come up on Shuffle that I've completely forgotten about is on that album, and I'll go back and listen to it and be like, why did I not pay more attention to this at the time? It's another one that, for some reason, just got, like, swept under the rug for me anyway at the time. But, yeah, my favorite Skepta album, 100%. Like, I think it is. And, like, even seeing him come to Dublin, that's another thing that, like, we could talk about as well is, like, Dublin's relationships with international artists like murals of skepta in ballymoon like you know lizzo murals all over the place as well there's even stormsy ones popping up around town at the moment now like artists are aware of like our appreciation of them now which is really cool um because we're not just like another little country that they go visit like they know when they play here even stormsy when he filled in for our boy chance the rapper at longitude this (laughs) year like you could tell that was a, a big deal to him you know what i mean like he really wanted to be there and he was really happy that he was there and it was like probably one of my highlights of the year seeing him like just don the irish jersey and run across the stage like for the two hours that he was there like he put his all into it it was great really like some of the pop stuff like that ariana grande album was pretty damn good i thought that was very good carly um, ray jepson kaylani kaylani produced a fantastic album um but yeah no i thought that ariana grande stuff was really good very early in the year very personal um i think there's the one about space nasa or something like that i thought that was a great song tra- great song mm-hmm. Aaron's album where he got like every rap artist under the sun and it's still bombed that, <laughs> that was that was insane. Like, he had Young Tog on a track. Young Tog's album as well, but, like, he had Young Tog on a track and that still bombed. Like, that's that takes work. Like, that is impressive. <laughs> the hate for SG and is just is strong. Yeah. <laughs> still, it outweighs the world's the love for Young Tog. Of the, of the decade. Yeah, and he has three of the most streamed top ten tracks of the year, of the decade. Yeah, his name Artist of the decade or something UK was. It's crazy. Surprised about Brexit. <laughs> oh, Brexit! You heard it here first. <laughs> Brexit, the Tories, and Ed Sheeran. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it out there. <laughs> what, are we allowed to say that? Everybody, tag Ed Sheeran in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Prove that you didn't. Where is it? Prove that you didn't cause Brexit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so what's coming out in 2020 who can we expect stuff from that we haven't already discussed we got kendrick uh marcus woods kendrick and marcus woods <laughs> arabi was gonna release something in 2020 100 percent uh sick nandy if we we're going on the burner just all the burner boys who didn't release this year i think i hope release next year um yeah. hair squared will be yeah, interesting big time. i'm interested to hear what that yeah. kind of sounds like I'm really, I'm really conflicted because like i obviously i loved all their stuff before your man jesse left and then like i think their stuff that's come out is really good like super catchy and all but it's like the hooks aren't quite in the same level do you know what i mean but i do i do think like potentially they could have you know because that song with jay prince was this yeah i think it's a big year for them i think if stuff doesn't go well it may be the the last we hear of them for a little bit what are a group though that like as i say are like made for radio play like another one that like 2fm spin would be just clutching at like every single release that they have like i even hear like 
Like, I remember hearing, like, 100 miles, like, just on 2FM as we were driving around one day and being like, this is crazy. Like, that still gets me, like, hearing, like, on big radio stations. Like, yeah, RTE is good and like, the sense that we have, like, pulse and everything. But hearing stations just, like, when you walk into a shop here and, like, I never got off the bus, like, as you walk into that shop, that's crazy. Because, like, most people wouldn't even be able to tell that that's an Irish artist then at mm-hmm. that point, which is another cool thing that came out of this year. Dying for a Denise Tyler release like a a proper denise tyler release i have no doubt uh anything she puts out will be amongst the top releases of the year uh like her like her lyrics everything i'm just yeah i'm super excited to see something full of like predominantly her like i know obviously she's got a lot of collaborative work and stuff and obviously it'd be nice to see like god uh god god alone uh god knows uh and some others on there but uh i'd like something that is predominantly her i think she has such an interesting story to tell Mm. i think she really provides a consciousness as well to irish hip-hop um, she's very political, very overtly political, and I think she she keeps a lot of the problematic stuff that we've seen with the Irish hip hop scene, with Versatile or whatever. Uh, she keeps that in check by providing someone who's the alternative to that. Uh, and I think she, yeah, I think she's a really essential artist to the development of the scene. So when she puts mm. out something, I will be the first person purchasing it. Yeah. Want to hear a big fuck off Pat Lagoon release, like a, a nice big project from that boy, because um. I don't know, he's just been real unfortunate with everything so far. Like, it's stuff he's done really well for himself, don't get me wrong, but I feel like he should be on the same level as, like, anyone who's on 2FM. has been absolutely everything like that, and I feel like maybe a big EP, maybe a big release for him would do that for him. Um, I'd love to see a couple more gigs from him up here as well, because even seeing him at the District thing um, at Halloween, like, I know from speaking to him, he wasn't happy with how that went, so to see him come back up to Dublin and see what he can do up here in like a venue would be incredible to see. Maybe bring Rickshaw along with him. I think that'd be fun. Do you think Kojak will release something solo without Luca Palm? Or? Yeah, definitely. I'd like to see it, to be honest. Like, I don't know. I feel, I feel like I've spoke to a lot of people and it feels like Luca Palm, I think, is a decent rapper, but I think he does oh, like... like he does take a lot of the energy out of the yeah, out of the room. He's on Kujak a lot, and it'd be nice to see more solo stuff from Kujak without that, and just to see what level he can take it to. And I think with an album, he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to do that, you know, because it's it won't yeah it won't be like a collaborative thing. But it, again, you can imagine some big features on that. Yeah, conversely, I'd like to see like what Luca Palm can do now, having learned what he's learned from working with Kojak. You know what I mean? Because like the couple of songs that he had before Green Diesel. Um, like they were good and everything but I feel like he definitely must have learned a lot more from like touring the UK releasing that EP everything like that I'd love to see the two of them split off and see what directions they go in separately now because I feel like that was what the whole point of Green Diesel was was to like you know make them learn as artists now I feel like next year they need to show us what they've learned I sort of see it though as like the whole soft boy thing is like it's a conscious effort to keep them all together and under one brand you know you don't you don't really think of like Luca Pan without Kujak and vice versa almost and Mm. I think that that's like a deliberate move, but I think it's a really smart move. You know, it's like the whole brand of Softboy and it's kind of like maybe with like Brockhampton or maybe even like House of Pharaohs or something like that mm. where they all are like grouped together as one thing and then if one does well, they all do well. And um, maybe that's something other people could pick up on. Do you know, do you know what I mean? I know yeah, yeah. it's not a proven formula for everyone, but I think that it does work for, for certain people. I think there definitely are groups who are taking inspiration from it now. Like even the Burner Boys, like I know they're hugely inspired. Mm by soft boy but there's been loads of little groups like uh the name escapes you know but the one that like upbeat and george and uh all them rejects. boys are on rejects rejects yeah mm-hmm. like that group even forming now in the, in the second half of the year like glacier gang as yeah well. glacier gang like all them guys they who have been very quiet as of yeah. recent yeah glacier gang have been so quiet this year I, i've been disappointed in that because i'm huge invader slim fan uh and just all of them in general like i really like their output and they I think Invader Slim put out one single this year, maybe. Um, yeah, Cold Front and uh, very little else. So I'm excited to hear what comes for them next year, mm. I think. Really? Um, Fire Collective as well. Fire uh, Collective, yeah. Was, yeah, absolutely. Like, Yeah, and again, Boy Wonder. Just another guy I forgot to completely mention this year, but one of my standout artists by far. Just like blew me away, came out of nowhere. Like I'd never listened to him before uh, his EP came out. And then like hearing it just absolutely blew me away i'd like to see more live performances from him as well because he was the standout of that district gig that pat lagoon was at like for me no offense <laughs> what the fuck that uh, yeah <laughs> didn't come here to be insulted <laughs> yeah i'd like to, yeah. 
yeah, standout performance for me that, but by far of that. And like, he's even doing now like support performances for who is it he supported there recently? Like, someone mad in the academy. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know There's what I mean? A like, token the, or something like that. Oh, no, no, I think it was, was um, what's his name, Lil TJ or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're getting all these like that's another great thing as well that we could even touch on is like. The artists YG coming over. That one was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, that was, was a really random one. Yeah, like, like yeah. crazy. But like even like I remember on the like on the night Token played at the academy, I was working in town and I met these lads that I went to school with like years ago on the bus. I was like, oh, where are you? Where are you boys? They were like, oh, the academy. And they were like, actually, we saw a Token and there was a guy. There was an Irish guy performing before him. Who was that? He was incredible. Like he was so good, man. Like even. People being opened up to Irish acts in that way is something that's really cool. And I think festivals do a great job of that as well. Like even EP this year was just like chocked full of Irish artists. Like I think my entire Saturday I spent going from Irish artist to Irish artist to Irish artist. And even if like someone drunkenly stumbled in and that saw really that pretty. Yeah. <laughs> that was me and Dylan. <laughs> me and Dylan oh, yeah. at Nilo. Yeah, <laughs> that was me and Dylan at Nilo. <laughs> but like, even if someone drunkenly stumbled in and had never listened to Nilo before in their lives, they might have gone away from that having then gone, oh, that was pretty all right, actually, which is a really cool thing. So. Rushes has got some stuff coming out. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, that was another one when we were talking earlier about like the international stuff and like the sounds. Like, I think he posted his, like, not to get too wrapped up in like the Spotify rap numbers and stuff, but he's doing big things obviously with diffusion it's not really mm. flynn as well yeah, yeah you know yeah. but uh yeah it's sick to see like people like that like kind of making waves as well not necessarily hip-hop but yeah i mean uh, we're sort of coming we've, we've said a lot yeah, of what we exactly, say yeah. but like what if you did like we'll just go like who do you who are you most excited about in the new year like um irish hip-hop you don't have to you don't have to fucking <coughs> say one person like but is there, is there anyone that you had any in mind uh i think sailor vida my would be pretty excited about her um just to get like uh, some proper like lengthy projects out of her. Um, I think Sick Nanley is coming soon, so I'm excited for that. Yeah. Oh, it's just a grand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there's like there's so many. Um, but I have to say Pat Lagoon just because I feel like another big project from him would be pretty sick. I'm not gonna stick to one. Uh, so I didn't know that was an option. Say la vie my Denise Chala. Uh, seventh Obi, I've been dying for another project from him. Uh, I actually made a list of this before we came in here. Uh, okay. Citrus Fresh uh, is another wig one. Uh, Gavin Da Vinci, and what was the last one? Mm, oh yeah, always, and it's always every year. God knows, I, I, mm. every year for me, I'm like, when is the year? God knows, is going to be ex- exploding, uh, and hopefully again this year. I think if things go the way they should go, Double Z and I will probably have a strong year. Yeah, I can't, yeah I know, none of us mentioned him. Like, I'm not massively into him, but he's he's doing numbers and like I can appreciate what he's doing. I think if he has the, like, I'm a streets guy, so I really like the street music, like, and he really has like the streets like unlocked, like, so with the music that he's been releasing and the videos and kind of the, him as a character as well. You know, I've spoken to him a few times, and he's just he's when you walk into a room and you see him there, like, you know, people don't want to pay attention to him, you know. So when, I know he has like something in the works you know what i mean like a couple of tracks here and there that he's played me uh if all things go well 2020 could be his year and para pablo as well um he has a show coming up in a few days i think he's an incredible lyricist um he has one of my favorite songs of the year um and who else k k which he dropped uh what's it just another love letter she's by far my my favorite artist of the year irish artist of the year Sand. I think what I was impressed with with Dubzino as well was the the range that he showed this year as well. He like founded himself as a drill artist, but went so much further with it on so many emotional cuts that he released throughout the year too. I think like a project from him, like you said, would be incredible just to see like him fully showcase his range in like one solid project. That K album as well was so underrated. So it's it's such a like polished excellent pop r&b hip-hop mm-hmm. album yeah. unbelievable yeah and you think the thing about k as well is one of the reasons why she's one of my favorites is because of her work ethic like she's just normal like you like everybody else like she goes to college she's a studio and she has a job and she's balancing all that and she's doing it into one her first release was february mm-hmm. that was final right she hasn't even been doing this a year february then she had perfect and she had like i do then she had all these different music videos then she had the uh, little snippets here and there of other stuff then just another love letter came out then she had her headline show but before that she had opened up for miss banks and she's doing all these things for the whole year and just that the rollout the promo 
um, even just seeing her perform and everything like that is absolutely amazing. And then for, for her to kind of roll into 2020, I'd love to see what she would do. I don't know if she would release a project because Just Another Love Letter is there and you want to kind of let it simmer. I know she has like college and things like that, but just having that kind of momentum going into the new year is very important for an artist like her, especially someone who's only been doing it under a year. Because usually when you want to use like your first year to just make singles and kind of polish and find your sound, and she's kind of done the pop, the R&B, the Afro beats, Afro mm-hmm. fusion, all of that into one, and she's put the project out. And like, just, just if, if you go talk to her, like you will see the energy that she has. Like mm-hmm. by far my, my favorite artist of the year, like, like hip hop, R&B, pop, whatever it is, K is that number one for me. She literally already has like a pop star sheen to her. Yep. Like the, uh, like the singles she's been putting out are proper chart hits. Like I've, been staring at the numbers on them being like why is this not in the millions like mm. this is huge sounding like everyone needs to check her out she's so cool shout out to dear fact too man because they'd be mm-hmm. doing that work mm-hmm. with dear fact trust the entertainment solo mona lisa you know simba for the studio time all that shit you know shout out to all of them for that uh for myself uh denise obviously and then alex goff and maliki i think will have massive years and i'd like to see if russ and gano family will come back I know Merley had a fantastic album that not many people listen to. I think it's beca- I think it's called The Intangibles, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a fantastic record. Obviously, God knows is about. And I'd love to see something from them, even if it's just the odd song or two and going into 2021, kind of bringing things back, you know? Yeah. No, um, I think Cobb the Dude, um, mm. I'm a big fan. Like, like, the way he raps is like a fucking whirlwind. Like, you know, it's like, it's it's crazy. Um that boy goes on stage and he's sweating after the first yeah, song not because yeah. you know anything else other than he is putting work in when he gets in on that stage like even seeing him feature with like Nilo and stuff at EP like or not at EP at Nilo's gig yeah, yeah. like just like incredible energy mm-hmm. yeah um, him I'm a massive fan of Strange Boy uh, I think I don't know if it, this will be his year because he's still super young and he's released like a super crazy amount of music already um, I think him and then Malachi as well I, I would have in mind um, but again I'd like to see God knows just because I think he's like what what more can he do do you know what I mean I think he's already established himself as like a really sick artist and it's just a matter of getting the attention it deserves Nantes Magnus I'd say for sure as well yeah, yeah. 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 he's like steady rollout he's not giving you too much you know he's obviously putting the quality in so I think he'll drop it when the time is right and I hope it's soon I think Sour Fruit started off the year with really good momentum and then uh, I think they know themselves. They kind of dipped a bit in the second half of the year. I'd love to see them come back with a really strong 2020. Um, I think like if they keep at it and if they do it right, they could be one of the biggest acts that we talk about this time next year. Um, it'd be really really cool. Uh, does anyone have like their like defining moment of the year? Like we we kind of talked about them a little bit a while ago, but like one moment that you look back on and be like, that was like 2019 right there. The GPO gig was sick. I um, I'm trying to think what else. like for me anyway it was 100 percent the listening party for casual work just like even looking around the room and seeing like a mix of like musicians journalists friends family everything like old heads new heads absolutely everything in between and like knowing that this had been like four years in the making looking at it and just seeing how like emotional the two boys got about it as well was just like incredibly inspiring really really was like and then having to come out and like you know people asking me about it even in the lead up to it coming out me being like just wait just wait just wait it's class like it's class and then it coming out and people being like oh yeah no it is like that was a really big deal i think uh god knows denise charla bantam uh outsider yp at the sounds from safe harbor festival Mm. in cork uh in the rowdy was one of my favorite live sets across the board not just irish internationally of the entire year there's like it was just the the energy was so nice uh it was super inspirational as well and i think that's something that sometimes like can come across corny um but they come across so genuine in it and you really feel that kind of euphoric like i'm really happy to be here and i feel like i'm taking something in from being here like you feel a part of a community in that setting i was surrounded by people that i had dragged to the gig who uh, had no idea who these people were and they all left the gig being like oh my god that was so good i like irish music now um and i i really hope that expands further um i saw them at the well uh a couple of weeks back and they brought a few people on stage with them uh, they had nilo up on stage with them and 
uh, your one from the singer Sunita from Shokra and a couple of other people. I'd love to see that expand further and have this really like big energy from what mm-hmm. we see with Russ and Gano family of like bringing everyone on board and everyone performing together. I think there's re- something really cool in that. But uh, yeah, definitely. I can't stop singing the praise of the God knows. And Denise Jaila, I just honestly, <laughs> I just think they're both so excellent. And uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for me it'd be Jafaris and a lot of voices in the church. I just think once that gets aired on RT and once it's online, I think it'll be massive and a lot of people will pay a lot of attention. I don't really know. I like think a lot I... of us did that panel for Open X. Yeah, like that's our entry as well. that, was, that was like little things like that. Like they're they're not the most momentous thing that everybody's gonna see, yeah. but like. Just wee small things like that yeah, feel yeah. feel like they make a difference. I even just think the fact that there's so many people in this room that are doing their own individual things is like testament to what's going on. That there's because before you probably didn't need more than one or two people doing whatever it is, but there's so much like it's too much to cover for like a couple of people, and everybody has their own slants and everything. You know, we like even when we were going around the room there and saying like who we want to see do well next year, like most people had different answers, and it's like I think yeah, we're getting to a point where there's just so many different people doing their own thing that we need as many people in this room if not more to, to cover it all so i guess mm. just for me like overall it was just the amount of people i met maybe in 2019 was like a moment for me like because you like when me met finch it must have been like two or three years ago i don't even know but like yeah. i was like fuck yeah irish hip-hop sick like you know what i mean <laughs> it's like no it's it, it i felt like a kind of small community or whatever mm. and like no it's just like fuck i've met so many people in 2019 mm. so yeah don't know mm. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think we can wrap there. I don't even know how long this has been going on for, but... Um, Four hours. Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably <laughs> close to that. Wait, wait, can we get a close as two? Two? Two hours, yeah. Is that including the break? Well, probably an hour 45. We took a break. Yeah. 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 Oh, fucking slackers. <laughs> 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 took a break. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like, it's been super sick having everybody here. Um, oh, wait, hold on a second. What about your album of the years? Album of the yeah. year? Yeah. Oh. oh. Definitively. Definitively, so yeah. So, to start this off, we're going to go you and go around this one. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? One album. One album. Yeah. Are, we talking, are we talking Irish or otherwise? No, no, everything. 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 Oh, everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Actually, you know what? That's going to be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, we'll leave Ireland as its own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then whatever else. So, we're doing two. Yeah. yeah. So, I have to think twice now. <laughs> is, uh, is I think Super Comeback Mode for Irish is probably my project of the year. And then otherwise, it's probably between Little Sims. No betweens here. Hey, did you hear the no two? Betweens. <laughs> no betweens. Okay, Little Sims. Yeah. Straight up. Shane? You're going to have to come back to me. Scouring <laughs> his phone over yeah, there. I'm like that clutching at the Spotify. Like, I've never seen man's <laughs> tongue move so <laughs> fast. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how to actually look at just Irish acts on my table. <laughs> you'll, you'll understand. Uh, well, I'd say, say probably casual work for Irish projects, uh, mm. for sure. Like, it's just it was a long time in the making and it really shows like it's it's really good and internationally I've no mm. I'm leaning kind of more towards looking great about Britain I really really enjoyed that album this year mm-hmm. yeah I don't know I don't know if that's a cop out because everybody seems to like it but still yeah, yeah uh, definitely like casual work just because of like how much went into it um, not just like p- between the boys but like how much it means to dubs as well like you know what i mean like that album is such a representation of where we're currently at in the society that we live in um and i think like that's what art is like art imitates life and they just did it so so well like i can see myself listening to that for years and years and years to come um so that's definitely like irish locked down final answer um and then like international no betweens no but no No in betweens in here Um, (laughs) and then like international like there was so much good stuff um but like it's weird because like you you get like your spotify wrapped at the end of the year and like you get like all these artists and this one wasn't even like close to any of my top shit but like loyal carners not waving just drowning definitely hit me so hard this year so definitely that one um yeah in terms of like stray up hip-hop uh, am I going to say more than one? Yes, I am. So in terms of uh, straight up hip hop, <laughs> we've got the Mango Mathman album, obviously with casual work. I don't know if it counts as hip hop, but probably my overall album of the year uh, is For Those I Love. I think it's got a lot of mm. inco- like a lot in common with hip hop. Obviously, like the spoken word element of it. I think it's got a lot that would appeal to hip hop fans. I think that's one of the most beautiful albums I've heard, like full oh. stop. Uh, mm. it is like so emotional it's so beautiful such a, a vi- and it's, it is in a similar vein to casual work you know mm. it is this kind of tale of living in Dublin 
Um, but I just think that the writing on that, the production on it, everything about it is perfect from the first. I, di I didn't know the people involved before I listened to it. I just got recommended it. And uh, I've like never fallen in love as fast as I did with that album. It got taken off Spotify. Yeah, it it's, it? you, can't, you can't listen to it online at the moment. I think they're planning on re-releasing it next year. Uh, it definitely didn't get the attention it deserved. It didn't at all. And it would have been my album of the year like across the board. Uh, but I, I think they're planning on re-releasing it next year. So it's not... Because it would have been like for Mercury Prize, uh, not Mercury Prize, for the Choice Prize, uh, it would have been my my choice and everything, what I think. But uh, I don't think it's eligible for stuff because they're re-releasing it next year. But uh, if you do get the chance to get a hold of that album, honestly, the most beautiful thing. Uh, internationally, Little Sims again. Yeah, just gorgeous. She's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mentioned I mentioned Kay before, so obviously just another love letter is mine. Um, I said all the shit that I said, so I need to repeat that. Um, the biggest thing, actually, one, one thing I'll add is the the female representation. Um, I, I literally looked at you when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> the female representation is, is absolutely um, amazing from her. And then obviously Soleil, she dropped something and Tamika and all these other people, um, like Kelly and Leisha and Amy and all these people. But just another love letter, like Irish album wise, I know it's not hip hop, but like, you know, for me, like that was just my favorite. Um, if we're talking hip hop, then probably Awkward Z, What's Next, probably one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Internationally, um you mentioned him before dave psychodrama the lyricism of that fella like and he's he's like 20 he was 19 when he wrote that like that shit is crazy like do you know what i mean man, like his I can spell psychodrama at 19. <laughs> <laughs> i still can't bro <laughs> no, that, that album's amazing if you if you haven't listened to it go check it out um i had an album of the decade but i didn't i didn't know if we were oh, go on yeah, if you yeah, have it go for it go kid my city yeah oh okay i thought it was gonna be like okay. <laughs> Um, we could have come out with like Chance the Rappers no. <laughs> there's something that would have been difficult um, in terms of Irish stuff I probably probably the project I've most listened to is Stride uh, by Jafaris and then for the international that Kehlani album I didn't think of enough attention I thought that was really good mm. in terms of album in the decade for me personally the one I've listened to the most which is a completely different question as we've discussed before but the one I've listened to the most is probably Bonnie Vare's 22 a million uh, which I think is very beautiful and it's really easy to listen to 40 minutes F flows perfectly so I'd probably say that for up a decade um, my uh, Irish album of the year probably I'm gonna say Gavin Da Vinci Super Scumbag Mood as well like there's just something so like cerebral and like astral about it it just like feels like you're in his own like planet i don't even know what it is it's the most <laughs> grimy like gritty thing ever and it's just like the production is like nearly all done by him um and yeah like we said earlier they've just got their own sound in the southwest at the moment Um, closely probably followed behind by green diesel but yeah su uh, super scumbag mode and then pff, album of the year fuck um probably igor but that like i do love it but i not really enjoyed a huge amount of albums in 2019 honestly and um, album of the decade it's not really an album it's a mixtape but better off dead by flatbush zombies is just like my top for sure mm -hmm. yeah i sure. went earlier now because they could have yeah. avoided the uh oh it's back around years, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. um i know i probably would have went with organized mess just in terms of like what i listened to the most that's what i'm just going to base it on um and then for international i'd probably go with psychodrama as well um, or Skepta's album and we're in between so. what album of the decade um, it's gonna be a Kanye album which yeah you see I was inclined to go that route it's about triple X nah <laughs> nah I wouldn't put that mm -hmm. there um, I don't know I actually can't come up with an album of the decade yeah fair enough yeah um, but yeah I, th I think we can pretty much wrap it up there um, well someone jump in with something stupid again yeah. <laughs> not that it was stupid but someone can't say yeah. something <laughs> me I was the one who jumped in with something stupid <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah like, I think we would pretty much end it there um, cheers for everybody coming down it was sick to get everybody together like I, I wish this would happen more often yeah. but you can only really get the excuse to chop this much shit at the end of the year no one else <laughs> listen to it at any other point so um, <laughs> yeah cheers for coming down and um, is this going to be on both Sold out? I just, just yeah, zeros, I guess. No, no, we can, we can split it and do that. And okay. get we'll sorted. figure something out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll sort yeah. Joint custody, yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, I think we can leave it at that. So cheers for tuning in and.